could let us know if this is all working you can hear us properly and just write it in the comments just to let us know you can hear us um as i was saying before before i thought we were live but we weren't live um we are working here remotely so this is a bit different to what you would normally see from us uh, usually we do our tastings in our studio um in the office and tonight obviously with covid measures and lockdown and all of this we want to make sure everyone's safe and we're going to do this remotely uh, and tonight i'm really lucky because i've been joined by kat presley who's next to us here hello say hello <laughs> and um and, uh, this is her first time doing uh, guesting for us here at four and sip so kat if you would like to tell us a bit about yourself yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, so I, I've been around whiskey, I think sort of fell in love with whiskey about 10 years ago now. Um, I've been lucky enough to sort of work on and off within the distillery for the last sort of five, six years. Um, started my life as a blogger. Um, and yeah, now sort of working with this sort of in the industry sort of full time. So quite lucky to make that move. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm here. So if anybody wants to sort of check me out, I'm under um, Whiskey Discovery Cap on instagram so yeah just say hi obviously comment as well to say hi so it'd be great to um see you know who's here who's on board as it were awesome great so we're really excited about this tasting tonight so hopefully oh, all yeah, of you definitely. who've got your november uh tasting boxes um and for those of you who've never been with us before you would have received your welcome pack exactly and now with the welcome pack um, sorry if you have seen us before, um, but uh, oh, Dave Worthington says hi, cat. <laughs> hi, Dave. <laughs> um, so in your welcome pack, which is uh, unbelievably presented, I have to say, even even I will have to say, is you get a little card here which tells you how to taste. So at Pour and Sit here, we're here for everybody, wherever you are on your whiskey journey, whether you're a beginner whether you're a more advanced uh we're an open community for everybody so please make sure you're getting your comments in and you're letting us know what you guys think of the whiskey that's the whole point of what we're doing here we really want to make this an open discussion there's no right answers and there's no wrong answers and um, you've got your tasting sheet here and your awesome tasting notes this is my favorite part about the box so there'll be a little part about each whiskey i can't get used to sorry to this left and right thing I'm kind of <laughs> Um, and that will kind of tell you about the whiskey and here on the back you've got space to write your own tasting notes and what you guys think of the whiskey and that is the most important thing so yeah, exactly. that will help you along your whiskey journey yeah exactly um, we definitely want to hear you know your thoughts and what you're sort of tasting it's definitely you know nothing everybody sort of what they taste and what they smell is completely different and nobody's wrong in terms of what what they sort of pick up so yeah, I'm always think like when you're in a room full of like even two three people multiple people everybody will always get something different so that's exactly it, it depends on your sometimes yeah. depends on your mood what the weather's like who knows oh, yeah, your, definitely. your experience can be totally different from a dram and yeah, uh, yeah. here we have the lovely drams that we'll be trying to <laughs> This one is broken now, so. <laughs> Magic. Magic applies to me, it's fine. And in the bottom of your pack here, you've got two Glen Cairn glasses, which are awesome. So hopefully you've got, you can pour your whiskey into these tonight. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've, got, I've got mine on here, okay. so they're ready. I've, I've got mine, yeah, pre-prepared. This is like blue yep. one I made uh, previously. Sadly, it's empty at the moment, though. Okay. Sadly, it's empty at the moment, but we are going to fill those now. So like I said, if you have just joined us, we are um, working remotely at the moment due to COVID restrictions. So you will not see the usual kind of production quality, all singing, dancing, pour and sip, um, usual fanfare, yeah. let's say, when we do our tastings. But uh, we're still here with you guys. We're chilling with you guys. We're going to be tasting with you guys. So let's get to it. Now, the first round that we're going to be trying is the Glen Goyne. Uh, legacy. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah. See, I told you about the right. Oh, this is so weird. Oh, I don't even know if I can see that. Exactly. If anybody can see that, apologies. <laughs> exactly. The Glen oh, screens are uh, mirrored, so it's very odd. That's exactly it. Uh, now, Glen Goyne is one of my favourite distilleries. Yeah, if you like it, we're going to pour. Let's pour it now. So, for those we haven't poured ours either, so it's just going to open and pour and taste along with you guys. Pour and then sip. 
This is this is as close to sharing a dram at the pub or a bar as we're going to get at the moment. That is exactly it. Uh, sorry, just uh, and so uh, Glengoyne is one of my favourite distilleries. Um, why is it one of my favourite distilleries? They just stick to tra tradition. And um, Glengoyne is not some uh, distillery you're going to see doing crazy cask maturation and crazy finishes, crazy kind of new ideas. They have stuck to the same traditions that when the distillery was set up back in 1833. So the history of Glengoyne goes back to 1833 and uh, where George Connell, who was a farmer, founded it. And previously it had been doing illicit uh, whiskey productions and he um, managed to legally produce whiskey on this site. And it was uh, called the Burnfoot Distillery. Uh, and then later on it was called the Glengeen Distillery, um, which actually means Glen of the Wild Geese. And then 1906 became Glengoyne as we know it today. Uh, now, Glengoyne is a curious distillery in, 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 in uh, terms of its location. It's located about half an hour from Glasgow, but it sits on the Highlands line. So it's just uh, at the south of the Highlands and the north of the Lowlands. So Glengoyne actually distill their whiskey in the Highlands and then send it via a pump underground to be matured in the cask uh, in the Dunnish warehouse which is in the lowlands. So it's a really interesting distillery that kind of splits and divides two different uh, regions, which is super interesting. Now, um, when talking about Glen Goyne, there's a few things I, I really want to make sure that everyone kind of uh, knows about to um, appreciate this dram in its, in its entirety. And that's the six principles of Glen Goyne, which are the Glen Goyne way. Um, and uh, these are really important to understand um, the uh, what Glengoyne is all about. And the first principle is that Glengoyne is completely unpeated. It is 100% peated, unpeated. Jesus, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%
So the, the third principle is uh, sherry cask maturation. So 90% of the drams at Glengoyne are sherry cask maturation, but they're finished in sherry whiskies and first fill sherry barrels. Uh, this is why you get this very sweet kind of sherry style that Glengoyne is really famous for. And it's really important uh, to their uh, whiskey um, production. So uh, I think before we get to the other three principles, which we'll let you know, because you really don't want to hear me go on and on and on and on about principles, we should actually start trying to try this whiskey. So let's all kind of nose it together and then we can all discuss what we're getting on the nose. Please write your comments, what you are getting aromas wise from the glass. And then we can discuss the other principles after that. Yeah. So what are you getting, Kat? So yeah, so for, for me, certainly, you know, that, that while you're explaining that sort of slower production methods that definitely gives a very sort of, you can smell it in the nose. It's very, very smooth, very soft, like creamy, buttery notes sort of definitely coming through Absolutely. honey notes. Absolutely. Yeah, a little bit of flora notes as well come there. And then, um, yeah, in the palate, I was getting definitely, again, similar to sort of the nose, but also that sweetness from the sherry cast is definitely coming through for me as well. So that's, that's so it's, it's an amazing dram. It is. So the, it's bottled at 48% and is mostly actually it's a split between first fill uh, uh, bourbon casks and uh refill sherry casks yeah. um, so you but like you were saying cat there's a real sherry nose to this you can yeah. taste it sherry soaked raisins figs yeah. uh, sherry dessert notes madeira cake even uh, jonathan yeah. williams hi all he's pumped for tonight's drams i don't blame you i'm pumped as well uh, katie williams what you, uh, Impressive whiskey collection, London whiskey guy. Yes, thank you very much. Glengoyne is such a beautiful distillery. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, maybe if you want to know later, I can discuss some of those drams in there with you. Uh, Jeff Brown says, deserve a dram if you can manage to get from the car park on one side of the main road to the distillery on the other side in one piece. <laughs> uh, Scott Grierson, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, sitting here about a 10 minute drive from Glengoyne. Very, oh, very now, Glengoyne is often considered the most beautiful distillery in Scotland, mainly due to its waterfall and the hidden waterfall that provides uh, its water source for the 1.1 million litres of water, that, uh, uh, of liquid that Glengoyne produces a year. Um, so that's a very lucky uh, position to be in. So Jeff Brown says melon peach coming through for me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, um, no, I yeah, I can definitely, yeah, I can understand it with that fruitiness, yeah. So, 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 so fruity. So now, I think, yeah, over, overall, it's definitely, I think you've got sort of that creamy fruit, sort of soft fruitness, I think, coming through. And then um, I think that's the fun of the whiskey that you sort of get like an overall sort of what I, I always think of it as a journey. Sort of, you know, what does it start off like? Is it is it spicy? Is it sweet? And then you, you always have, you know, obviously, you know, being a musician, you've got sort of an introduction and then sort of the middle story. And then, and then, sort of then goes goes to an end like a crescendo and then sort of goes down again. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and I find that with all sorts of whiskey. And then I think obviously for anybody at the beginning of the whiskey journey, don't feel like you've got to be go, oh yeah, I need to pick a note out. Like just get an overall feel. And then from there, just sort of think, well, actually, does that remind you of anything? You know, if, if you enjoy sitting down over a drama, go, you know what, I really want to know if I can pick out individual sort of notes or anything you know but if you don't want to that's okay as well like it's 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 a drink to be enjoyed i say we're like uh we're like whiskey detectives that we're yeah. trying to uncover the mysteries within the dram uh yeah green tea is green says agree getting the sherry for sure tom mission you get the sherry and the vanilla from the bourbon yeah. absolutely for, for me this is a classic glen going yeah um, i know i haven't tried it yet uh, <laughs> i'm still <laughs> uh, but it, I, I should Basically, this series called the chapter, the legacy yeah. series, is celebrating um, significant moments and people within the Glengoyne history. Uh, the, there was a previous uh, expression called the chapter one, which was celebrating Cochrane Cartwright, who uh, back in 1869 was the distillery manager, who was famous and notorious for bringing the Glengoyne way to global recognition, the slow distillation, the maturation in sherry casks. That whiskey has sold out, so I have to say that the, the first chapter of this edition, this is a limited run, so if you do like this dram, you'll get 10% discount at the Pour and Sip store. I would really recommend going there and getting a dram because this will sell out. Um, this, this particular edition is um, celebrating Peter Russell and the Russell family, but Peter Russell in particular, who is famous for keeping these traditions that we were talking about, these principles of Glengoyne, 
And um, he's the founder of Ian McLeod Distillers, who bought Glen Goyne back in 2003 for 7.2 million uh, pounds. Um, and um, he's been famous for really keeping to those traditions and being forward thinking, but whilst respecting tradition. And that's what, for me, is such a special thing about Glen Goyne. Um, let's try it. Let's try. I'm sorry, Kat, you've already gone. I have to say, I think we might as well, I think, say a cheers to Peter to that one. Yeah. Ian McLeod, obviously, for, for keeping Glen Goyne and really pushing it as a single malt as well. Totally. You know, previous to that, I think if, if it wasn't for them and obviously sort of the later stages of obviously all of us, you know, really turning into single malts, then this would have started off like obviously going into blends for many years. So, yeah, cheers to Peter for that one. Cheers, Peter. And cheers, yeah. Peter. I still can't get used to this. Uh, Peter, <laughs> <laughs> Peter Gould has already gone ahead. He's, uh, he's already on the palette. Spicy and sherry notes. Are you getting that, Kat? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Is that sort of yeah, cherry, cherry sort of as you say, almost like Christmas cakey. Christmas cake. There's a little hint of spice. Yeah. But it's, it's you know at forty eight. It's not as sharp as some other whiskies that I've had on here. So it's still right. again, really smooth, but very subtle, and it all sort of blends in nicely as well, rather than sort of sharp spikes of notes. I found. Yeah, because Harris says it's his first time. Really finish. Loving the presentation. You and Cameron, love the presentation. First time whiskey is lovely and smooth. Peter Gould, long finish with lots of spice. Yeah, I'm getting, I mean, like Kat was saying, these Christmas notes are really there. I always get that with sherry whiskey. In particular, yeah. Glen, Glen Goyne, it is for me, it's such a Christmas dram. The, yeah. And we're getting closer. <laughs> so it's yeah. Yeah. Um, very close. The sherry soaked raisins, the figs, that dark kind of a sherry fruit is really their Madeira cake, Christmas cake, uh, Christmas pudding. It's a, it's a really wonderful yeah. palette. And when we were discussing that really slow distillation process and the unhurried yeah. approach, you so taste that within this single malt. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you that that sort of slower maturation and that slower sort of distillation process is definitely all, all comes together. And that's what you can taste is that sort of really smooth, silky creaminess. Absolutely. Ram, but yeah. Absolutely, lots of dessert notes for me as well. Yeah. Banana bread and just lemon drizzle cake. It's just, it's a wonderful dram. Peter Gould, a long finish with lots of spice. Katie Joseph, love this dram. It's gorgeous. Uh, yeah. I really agree with you. Uh, Catherine Lamb, oofed. Sorry if I pronounced that. Oofed, oof. Uh, that's got a kick to it, guys. Uh, yeah, there is a real spiciness towards the, uh, the back palette. Yeah. Where there's maybe some oak spice, black pepper, yeah. slight bit of ginger maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe that's that's to to obviously to I've got I've got some water here of my trusty very fancy oh jar <laughs> with a teaspoon because um, I haven't got any fancy pipettes in the house exactly so when we were in the market, when we were in the studios we were using pipettes now we're working remotely we're using teaspoons yeah, exactly jam jam jar will do but I, I have to say yeah. that you know if, if obviously again you know if, if you're starting on your journey about drinking spirits if this is a little bit too spicy again uh, get get this is what i do at home just literally a little bit on a spoon on a teaspoon and just drip it in because that's going to be about the most consistent so add a bit of water um, and this is generally going to do two things of so obviously sort of um breaking down sort of those flavors but also toning down the alcohol a little bit and making, if you're finding it too spicy, that will tone it down a little bit as well. Yep, and we discussed this, if you were with us in the last uh, pour and sip tasting, we did discuss yeah. the, we were talking well, about water, so hopefully, hopefully you can use that kind of, and exactly what Kat was saying about kinds of uh, diluting your dram, but bringing out new flavors that you will get with which water adds. Um, green tea is green, says it's a very front mid tongue taste where some others hit you, well me, more at the back of the tongue, in the throat. Yeah, <laughs> I'm totally with you there, though. That is definitely true. Tom Mission, this has made me look forward to Christmas more. Been feeling Christmassy all week. I think <laughs> the darker evenings, the as soon as it starts to get dark around four. Uh, weather. That 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 is it. Like exactly you know, it. And, the changing in the seasons and and this sort of time, especially the dark weather. You know, the more sort of spicier sherry dram, a little bit higher ABV for me. Like that sort of. Yeah, I, I drink sort of seasonally as well. So that's all the drams that I'm, I'm going towards at the moment. And then obviously once we sort of get to spring and summer, I'll go for something a little bit lighter, but exactly. like peated heavy sherry dram, like this is this is a moment for them to shine for me. This is Christmas morning. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, it is nice. definitely 
but it, I, think, I, think it's a good, I think it's a good all-rounder actually it's a good sort of starter dram that's an all-rounder you know I, th I think it suits quite a lot of occasion this one yeah I, I I can't fault this one to be honest with you and it's actually the first time I've tried it it's just yeah, such it's a so warming so beautiful mouthfeel coating yeah. mouthfeel it really is such an easy sipper considering it's 48% yeah. ABV and is just a wonderful example of Glengoyne and their sherry cask maturation being the third principle. Yeah. And this is a classic example of Glengoyne. And yeah. Nigel Glenn says, yes, the warmth at the back of the mouth has just hit me. Very nice. Yeah. Absolutely, Nigel. Completely agree. Now, I'm getting lost with time, so we are really going to have to move so, on. I'm yeah, sorry. I was going to say, do, do you want to quickly finish the last three principles of Glengoyne and then we'll move on to the next round? I think we're done with Glengoyne. I think if yeah. you would like yeah. to... If you would like to move, uh, know more about the distillery, there's so much information on the website where they list these principles and the Glengoyne way. But it's yeah. really important to recognise that this is a patient dram. It's unhurried, it's yeah. unheated, and it's sherry cask maturation. Those are the most important principles. So yeah. when you're trying that, hopefully you've understood and you, you kind of uh, have kind of understood what the Glengoyne way is. And then, oh, really quickly, have you got the full bottle to show, to show the viewers what they look like of that one? For the Glengoyne, yeah. Yes, for the Glengoyne, yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's the bottle. So, yeah, I was going to say, I think just a quick note there. I'd like that they've just recently changed the packaging and they've made the goose, Glengoyne goose, more prominent. So, yeah, I, I really I really quite like that. Glen of the geese. I, I'm so <laughs> sorry to everybody watching this. I cannot get this. It's, it's just sending me all off. Glen of the geese. Um, now, anyway, let's move on. Next round. Uh, yeah, you, I'll take, have you got the bottle of the back to show? Yep, I certainly have. So for me, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be pouring this as well. So the next one is going to be Uncle Nearest, the 1858 whiskey. So this is an American whiskey. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, quite, it's still quite a new distillery. Um, it was sort of founded in 2017. Um, and this particular sort of expression we're having here, it's um, currently, obviously, the distillery, because it's still quite new, is distilling, and it's obviously ageing their sort of cast and their stock at the moment. So currently what, what we're talking here is they've had it made for them from two local distillery. Um, it's the Tennessee whiskey. So what that means is basically within Tennessee, you've got to have what is called, oh, I can't think, it's gone. What's the process? I should know. The process is um, the Lincoln House process, sorry, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, the spirit is distilled um, and it's obviously been put through and passed through um, sugar maple charcoal in exactly the same way as obviously, you know, the most famous Tennessee whiskey, I think, Jack Daniels. Um, so the, the story behind this distillery, so Uncle Nearest, is a name of a gentleman called Nathan Green. Um, and the founder is uh, pretty cool. She's a Nathan uh, called Fawn, her name is, I believe. Um, that she's, yeah, she's an African-American lady. She's basically read about the story of Uncle um, Nearest um, in a book that came out about Jack Daniels, I think four or five years ago, and fell in love with the stories, the fact that um, he's the first recorded known African-American who was distilling. Um, and he is um, known now to sort of be taught Jack Daniels, obviously all of his trade when he was a young lad um, and founded um, this sort of Tennessee whiskey process. Um, and the idea is obviously is believed that it's just sort of smoothens and takes all the impurities and everything from another stage through the charcoal before it then gets put into cast and age. Um, same as with obviously with all American whiskey, um, this is corn, so it's got to be by law more than 51% corn. This is an 84% corn mash bill. The rest of it is rye, um, and then it goes into obviously virgin American oak, like all American sort of whiskey bourbon is sort of by law. Now, um, they also obviously is all natural colours. You can see in comparison to the to the Glen Goyne, I don't know for those of you who can see at home, it's a lot darker. Um, so the natural colouring is obviously it's quite a young whiskey still. I don't know the acts that we say age, but generally I would say for maybe two, three years old from, from what I can gather, but I don't know the exact age of this one. And um, going into it that it's all the colours naturally from that word and generally with American bourbon, they heavily char the inside of the barrel. So, so all that colour is basically 
the spirit leaching into the wood to take the colour and the flavour and all that sugars and everything out for it. Um, but it's it's just yeah, it's just amazing. The colour is is I, I think this is incredible and really welcoming. And that being in new oak gives it a very distinctive flavour that's so heavily on caramel. That's that's what I think sets American bourbons, what American whiskey in general, I think, apart from say Scotch or Japanese. Um, but yeah, I would say so. Yeah, if for those of you who haven't already, I think have a have a smell, have a taste. I didn't realize it about the what did you say? What, what, what was the percentage of corn in the mash bill? 84. 84. Well, wow. 84. Yeah. And then the rest of the corn right. whiskey, isn't it? It's so uh, me initially, it's very, very sort of sweet and very sort of punchy. You definitely get that caramel, but I think on the nose, it's definitely I can I can smell that rye. So it's it's sort of a nice sort of toasted rye, not too heavy, a bit more sort of bready sort of flavour coming through. Oh man, it yeah, just, that, that, it's, it's, it's for me, having been to America numerous times, I love yeah. candied corn. I don't know about you guys, let me know in the comments if you do as well. I love candied corn, and this is just pure yeah, candied it, corn. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely it. similar to that, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'm I'm half American and I, I grew up in America, lived there when I was like 10 to 13. Okay. I definitely did the whole trick or treating, gone round and candy corn and all that sort of jazz. So, Hershey's Kisses and everything is definitely. Yeah. It's definitely autumnal, I would say, this one. It's, um, yeah, very, I think that sort of caramel, that sugar, obviously, for, for me with the corn, um, in comparison to obviously, say, malt, it gives it this sort of very silky, sweet sort of flavour within the dram, and that's what you're getting through more in the palate, whereas in the palate, I don't get the rice so much when you initially taste it. I definitely get that sort of caramel and then a little bit in the finish, actually, and a bit in the spicy finish. Mm. Okay, so Tom Mission, I can imagine the climate in Tennessee helps with the colour as well, such a deep, rosy colour. Mm. Absolutely. Totally, you get that often with Tennessee whiskey. You can really feel the, and, and taste the climate of the unpredictable climate that you get in Tennessee, um, which we had previously discussed as well, and you can see it as well in the colour. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I've not gone for this. So cheers, guys. Let us know what you think about this one. We've just gone for the Glen Goyne, and now we're with the Uncle Nearest. Yeah, the Uncle Nearest. From, from Scotland to America, um, yeah. from the yeah. Highlands to Tennessee. Let us know what you think. Let's cheers. Cheers. And I, I yeah, definitely, I think this this is a very sort of interesting distillery for me. They're, they're sort of quite young. And, you know, with the whole, obviously, Black Lives Matter movement and everything as well, that is really sort of showcasing that actually... There's a bit of forgotten history here that I think in America that we're probably going to see more and more of. There's obviously people going for that story. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really sort of champion. It's, um, yeah, the founder, she, she's a, um, went to approach, I think, for her 40th birthday, basically fell in love with this story. And you know what? I'm, I'm just going to go over to Tennessee, go over, obviously, to Lynchburg, where the hometown is, and go and sort of dig into a bit more of the story. Um, and then eventually, I think, found um, one of their sort of great, great, great nieces, a descendant um, from, obviously, the family, from Nathan Green himself, um, and approached the family and decided, you know what, actually, why, why aren't we doing this distillery? And I think they've looked back at some of the recipes, I think, that were found and recorded um, at the time. So that's, that's why they've gone back, and I think that's what inspired the recipe for this as well. So really sort of going back to their roots, as it were. Yeah, um, I think reading the new distillery, you know, they're planning on to sort of the distillery is built with space in mind to do their own bottling and aging on site. So mm -hmm. interesting, you know, I've, I've fingers crossed maybe sort of in the next year or two that they'll have some of their own spirit that they've aged and cast going into on site. So it's a really new, exciting new distillery, I think. One, one to definitely keep your eye out for. And this is just, I mean, incredible, incredible stuff. Which is similar to what we were discussing last time. If you had the last subscription box with Whistlepig, which is another really exciting young distillery like this one, that hopefully soon we will be able to see truly aged Whistlepig whiskey. Um, and this one, Kevin Harris says, uh, very sweet. It is. It is super sweet. The corn for me is super present in this. You are going to get these kind of wonderful brown sugar notes, peach, yeah. cinnamon, apricot, caramel corn, candied corn. Yeah. Um, a little yeah. bit of a rum quality in there as well yeah. for me a little bit it's, it's, there's certain parts that's quite fruity yeah absolutely um, yeah. so oh, well, I've got a few comments here which have just come in Nicholas, Stephen, 
sweet caramel toasty on the nose. Uncle Nearest, that is absolutely 100%. It's such a uh, really mm. caramel is so important in this drink. You can really smell it instantly. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm getting sort of a bit more like a sort of a nutty pecan note as well. On, oh, on yeah. Those kind of American pecan pie as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. very sweet, but not a taste I'm used to. May need to figure it out. That's the great thing about this at Four and Sip. You are going to be able to try whiskey and uh, bourbon, for that matter, that you um, you haven't tried before. You've got a real week on from Scotland to America. We're about to go to Japan. Exactly. Um, you, you really are going to get to go all around the world, trying maybe new things that you maybe haven't been yeah. used to, or you're, you know, it's really going to open up all of our minds to different types of whiskey. So that's the really great thing about uh, Exactly. Four and Sip. And I think, I think that's the thing, you know, until, until like everybody, I think even experienced drinkers like myself, I mean, you know, me and you were talking chat before that actually there's a few drams here. Well, the two, actually I haven't tasted all of these before, even though I'm familiar with the distillery, all of these are all sort of new to us. So it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting that you still, regardless of where you are on your journey, you are going to be at, with every subscription box that the team have put together, a really good selection. That's that exactly it such difference in contrast and then you'll you'll get to learn you know something for everyone with within that you know some some hopefully that is going to be your next favorite dram and you're going to really love um others that you might go yeah okay that was nice but you know maybe maybe that's not for me but that's also a good thing that you know that actually when you're going to go and purchase a bottle that you know quite confident going actually i really like that sort of caramel sweetness of an american sort of whiskey that I'm going to go for a bourbon, I'm going to browse through the bourbon aisle. Or, you know, obviously for, like you just say, the Glen Goyne that I actually don't want peated, I want something that's sort of a lot more smoother and easy drinking, then you know, okay, I can go and have a look and try some other Glen Goyne or pick up that bottle again with a bit more confidence. Absolutely. I mean, for me already, the, this Uncle Nearest is a discovery. This totally suits my palate. Mm. I'm, I'm a big fan of high corn percentages in these uh, American whiskies, and this yeah, no, it, it reminds me. If anyone's ever tried mellow corn, let me know in the comments. It's a bit of a secret, uh, but it reminds me of a less harsh version of mellow corn or the Balcones Baby Blue, which are oh, two other Balcones Baby Blue. That is my it's, like exactly. Like, it's just, love, 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 love that. Which has got that caramel corn, candied corn kind of note, which comes yeah, from the high corn yeah. natural, and this is kind of sitting in that kind of region for me, but I, I really like this. Neil, Neely NAMA fan, a new Rye fan. Thanks to last month's tasting, absolutely. The Whistle Pig was just uh, a real winner for me as well. Uh, and this is Caramel Sugar Joy without the bourbon afters, absolutely. Uh, Jeff Brown, to be honest, don't like it. That That's absolutely fine. That's, exactly. that's, the, that, that's the great thing about this. You might not like, this is, we're all discovering the whiskey yeah. together. So. Like I said, you might there might be something you don't like. This might be too sweet for some people. I, I would assume yeah, it's something. Yeah. The Lafroy. So many of you found the Lafroy too PT last month. So you know it, it, we're we're all going to kind of work out what it is we like. Nicholas Stephen Palitas knows like this a lot. It's better than Jack. Yes, it is. One hundred percent. I hope it's a little bit better than Jack. I mean, Jack Daniels is is you know it it does his job well. He does his job well at the price point and availability. And, you know, for years and years, I've never tasted Jack Daniels on its own. And a few years ago, I sort of went, you know what, let's have a taste of it on its own. No Coke, no anything like that. And it what are you is trying to say? So when you were young, you were just drinking it with Coke. Is that what you're trying to say? It's not. I think when you sort of go out, you know, a lot of my friends who are sort of non-whiskey friends are go, oh, you you like them, you like scotch. And they'll go and buy a round and then they just sort of come round with obviously JD and Coke because that's, you know. <laughs> Most places that you go to, you're gonna you're gonna have that on there. Um, you know, I'm not ungrateful because uh, I'm friends are you know sharing a round of drinks, but it's it's I think that's the most common thing. But it's actually sort of going, you know, has anybody ever tasted Jack Daniels on its own? Yeah, you know, and it's very caramel, it's very sweet for me. It's just like full of pear drops, like pear drop sweet. Absolutely, I, I, um, a bit I, sweet for my taste personally. I much prefer this, but it, you know, it does its job very well and. We're grateful for that to be able to pave the way for other whiskies like this. This is when you know your friends say they like Jack Daniels. That's fine. This yeah. is this is just a better. It's Tennessee. It, which this is real. Exactly. Tennessee. You know, with with the idea of pour and sip is the fact that like okay, you go on me like that, but you want to discover what's beyond the supermarkets. You know, that's that's, that's what we're about. That you know, you've started on your journey or 
you you wanted to discover a little bit more so totally uh, yeah, right, should, we, should we move on to our yeah. last round? last round but just uh jonathan williams second neely whistle pig last month was great and this is also bloody good i agree green tea is green i'm a bit with jeff on this one compared to the glengoin much less subtle uh, or refined to taste the nose is interesting i i i agree with you there the glengoin is a really com much more complex dram yeah and, and you can taste that in the slow distillation process yeah. that it's obviously older uh, and that yeah. is yeah. Really more interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's that's one thing that I think a lot of American whiskies can't compete with on the Scott, which is totally. different. Is is the how long it's in the cask for, and that is just purely down to you know the what they call the angel share of evaporation. You know, Tennessee way hotter than it is in Scotland. Um, as a rule of thumb, you know, most of sort of Tennessee, Texas, that sort of belt, you're, they're looking at anywhere between sort of ten and thirteen percent. Of, of alcohol that's losing from the cast every year so it means that you know they would probably love to have five six seven you know ten plus years but it just means that when they come to bottle it they might not have a product that they're legally allowed to bottle or anything at all just because it would have been evaporated off so you know that's why a lot of bourbons generally you don't see the sort of ages that you commonly get with scotch or something like a 10 year old Totally. And it's, it's an unfair comparison sometimes to make in terms of age. Uh, Peter Gould says, definitely get the rye caramel wood and even some floral on the nose. Agree, Catherine Lamb. This is the whiskey JD wishes it was. I love that, Catherine. <laughs> that, is, that is exactly it. <laughs> that is exactly I, I think it's the, I think it's the bigger, well, it's like the granddad of JD. Like it, <laughs> David Hockman, I got a bottle of Whistle Pig last time. Super good. I agree. The Whistle Pig was a real winner last time, and it's a, a, an absolutely brilliant example of a great rye whiskey. Nigel Gain, it's buttery and certainly sweet, unusual, but pleasant, interesting contrast with the Glen Goyen. Um, uh, and yeah, so Marcus Fenn, absolute caramel butterscotch notes uh, with a sweet corn taste in the throat. Uh, Tom Mission, the longer it breathes, the more it's building on me. I agree. Yeah, I'm a huge yeah. fan of the corn notes. It's it's a real soft one for me, and this is why, for me, this is a winner. Uh, let's move on, because we are going to run out of time. So we're going to move on to the... Yeah. Now, firstly, I just have to say I apologise to all of our Japanese viewers and listeners, if any of you are here, for any of the pronunciation you are about to hear. Uh, this is the Nika Takitsuru. Um, Pure malt dram. Now, this is named after Masataka Takatsuru, uh, who is the founder of Nika and um, possibly considered the forefather of Japanese whiskey, full stop. Um, now, Japanese whiskey has had an absolute boom recently, um, whether that's because of the highball boom 2014, where um, the Nika 17 year old blended whiskey won at the World Whiskey Awards whether it's in 2003 where Yamazaki 12 uh, was internationally recognized by the International Spirits Challenge and or, in my opinion, if it was Bill Murray sitting at the top of the uh, Regency Hotel in Tokyo in Lost in Translation saying, let's make this a, a Suntory time, uh, drinking his Hibiki 17. Uh, there are many reasons why uh, Japanese whiskey has hit a boom. Unfortunately, stock is just running out. There is just not enough stock and the demand is too big. So we are seeing a real point in time where the, the Japanese producers cannot produce enough whiskey um, for the current global demand. Yeah. Um, Nika have recently discontinued the Takitsuru, 17, yeah. the 21, the 25. Suntory have discontinued the 17, the 12 of the Hibiki range, the Hakushu 12. Yeah. So we're really seeing a period of time in which um, Japanese whiskey is becoming really hard to get hold of. Yeah. which is why distillers are kind of looking towards blended single uh, blended malts and non-age statement malts because they just haven't got enough stock to have the older 17 year olds the 12 year olds yeah. um now this nika is i'll just show it to you guys again it's a blend between the two distilleries of nika yoichi and miyagikyo um now just really quickly i'm going to be trying to be really quickly this because it's really important this is named after masataka takitsuru he is the founder of Nika, like I said, and the forefather of Japanese whiskey. Um, Takatsuru, he was born to a family of sake producers, so worked in alcohol throughout his whole life and in his whole childhood, and decided one day, I'm going to go to Scotland. I'm going to see what those guys in Scotland are doing, and I want to learn from those guys. So he gets set sail from Japan to Scotland. Let's be honest, in, this, in that day and age, back in 
that time. Oh, that's some some journey. That some journey. Some journey. He uh, he makes sure he stops in California to check out the vineyards in California. Yeah. Okay. And then he arrives in Scotland and enrolls to do a chemistry course at the uh, University of Glasgow. In his first year, he um, he uh, does an apprenticeship at Longmorn Distillery in Speyside. And in his second year, he um, goes to Hazelburn Distillery in Campbelltown, where he meets his wife, uh, Rita Cowan, who is a Scottish lady. They together, they move back to Japan and they take all this knowledge with them, that all the years that he's built of learning these trades, chemistry at Glasgow, learning the Scottish trades, how to make Scottish whiskey, takes it back to Japan. And he works for Suntory, believe it or not. Uh, Suntory being the rival of Mika. Um, and he has a 10 year contract and he helps Suntory set up the Yamazaki distillery. Um, Yamazaki, he was adamant, should have been set up in Hokkaido, which is the northernmost part of the Japanese islands. And why did he want it set up there? Well, the climate is similar to Scotland. We were talking about this earlier fresh water, clean air, cool climate, not a changeable climate, very cool climate, stable climate. And they didn't set it up there. So his wife says to him, why don't you set up your own distillery? So he sets up Nika Distillery. In 1934, Yoichi, the first distillery of Nika, is, uh, is built. In 1940, the first uh, single malt is released by Yoichi. And then in 1969, he releases, uh, he builds another distillery, his second one, the Miyagikyo Distillery. Uh, and that is the story of Nika. And now we have, uh, they are, you know, Nika and Suntory are the two biggest um, Japanese um kind of companies yeah. and uh, I think they're well known but I think that if there's again within Japanese whiskey your your some of the other smaller distilleries obviously coming up coming up now again so for anyone who's uh Ichiro. oh god I'm trying to open another Glen Cairn glass here to pour <laughs> see uh, I, I I ran out so yeah if anybody if you I've got a mini one okay now this yeah. is a mixture and a blend between the two distilleries it's mostly from the Miyagikyo distillery uh, and then a part are from the Yoichi distillery. Now the Yoichi distillery is much more, um, it focuses much more on, a, it's close to see so there's a much similar kind of salinity that you get in Isla. And the yeah. Miyagikyo distillery is much sweeter, smoother taste. Uh, there are sherry cask influences in this, uh, in this blend. Uh, the age date isn't really revealed, but it's believed to be somewhere between eight and 12 years, uh, the casks that are used. Yeah, yeah, um, I, think, I think it's about average 10 years. I think Average 10 years. Um, yeah. And yeah. I love Japanese blended whiskey. Now, sometimes in Scotland, blended whiskey gets a bit of a bad rep because it's not single malt whiskey. Yeah. The great thing about Japan, Japan, blended whiskey is an art form. It's a science. And there are absolute masters working in Japan. Uh, and we were discussing earlier about the idea that in Japan, they don't swap casks like they do in Scotland. No. No, they don't swap casks, and when they make a blend, it's, it's not like they're swapping, as you say, it's not, you know, you're not going to see them swapping casks with Santori to make a blend, that doesn't really happen. Everything is very much sort of all enclosed within their own sort of ecosystem, as it were. So I think to make the, obviously, when you when you go and look at, you know, um, Nika, for example, all of the, the range from the two different distilleries of either their own ones, it is made from either they like this one, of a blend of the two malts, um, or a blend of obviously the grain. So they've got a coffee grain to obviously to be a like nickel coffee malt um, that's made out of corn. Um, Which again, by the way, has also been um, discontinued. So we are just seeing so much Japanese whiskey being discontinued. We're we really drinking it all too. We are just drinking too much. So unfortunately, a pour and sip. We are encouraging you to drink Japanese whiskey, yeah. but drink it because it is running out and they are running out of the, uh, the, the ability to be able to provide enough stock for its global demand. Um, I'm just trying to find the comments here because I've kind of gone too far up. Tom Mission says this is going to be his first Japanese whiskey. Another great thing about the pour and sip subscription and the Brian World whiskey. Yeah. Um, uh, Steve Cooper, mine too, just haven't had a chance to try any. Benefit of pour and sip. Big that right up. That's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, Neil, MAM fan. Mine too always seems many seen too many scotch to try first look i'm i'm totally with you there i was exactly the same um i was really when i got into whiskey uh, scotch whiskey uh, scottish single malt it had to be from scotland but japanese whiskey really opened your mind to other world whiskies and that is a great thing about japanese whiskey yeah i think i think certainly like within japanese whiskey as well in general and this this is a great example of it that it's 
it's always a bit, I would say, um, it's a bit more kind of subtle. They generally don't like like huge punchy flavors, like you know, obviously like American whiskeys or some of the punches in Spain. The spice is still there, but it's, it's got sort of a gentleness of flowing. I suppose it's, you know, it's sort of resembling a lot of obviously Japanese culture, really. It's that sort of balance that they're always finding that balance. The subtlety in this way, you're absolutely yeah. spot on. It's the subtlety in the blend. I always find with, with yeah. Japanese whiskey. And so, I think with um, with this dram as well being predominantly from uh, Miyagyo, that that sort of just really reproduces a very sort of more fruity, sort of sweeter um, style of, of malt anyway, style of spirit. Yeah. And then with their Miyuchi, definitely more of a heavier, a bit more of an oil malt. And that combination of things being predominantly um, from Miyagi is it's definitely, I think, shining through for me on this one. And you've got a little bit of a hint of um, sherry cast on there as well. It's just a little bit. It's, it's when you compare it to obviously to the Glen Goyne, no. it's a lot more Christmas cakey. If we're on here, the fruit is a lot more sort of subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Nicholas Stephen, Nika, uh, dark fruit, spicy, pepper, question mark, wood, absolutely, definitely with the pepper, no question mark needed there, it's there. Just uh, keep keep writing your comments in for what you're getting yeah, yeah, here. Definitely, please, yeah, we, we definitely want to hear what, what you sort of think, and then, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be asking to see what your favourites as well, and then we'll be, I think, selecting our favourite from three towards the end. Neely, NAMA fan, Nougat, uh, white chocolate, uh, I, yeah, 100%. Uh, Peter Gould, mainly caramel on the nose, certainly initially. The whiskey is very sweet, vanilla, cream cake, and biscuits on the palate. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is a sweet whiskey, but actually the longer it gets to sit, there's a smoky note to this whiskey that is really coming through. It's very subtle, like we said. It's almost like waxy. Waxy, smoky. It's a little bit waxy. Yeah. But yeah, I think this thing is certainly yeah. But it's it's not it's not as you say it's not. I think it's not like it is has some peat. You, it, it comes through certainly in sort of a different way on this one. Ah, now on the palate, the peat is much more pronounced. Mm. Um, now that finish is lovely. It's a very long finish for me. It reminds me of a lot of tobacco in the finish, which reminds me. Of, uh, maybe a cigar smoker might like that, that kind of ashy kind of tobacco finish, maybe a bit sooty. Um, and uh, it's a creamy mouthfeel, 100%. Uh, just, just coming up with these comments, Tom Mission, Nougat, Sweet Smoke, exactly. And uh, Sorry, yeah. uh, Nicholas Stephen, Creamy as well, ne Neely and AM fan. Notes say smoke notes, not getting that. It's subtle, like we were saying, you're it's not really, going to get it. really subtle. Like, I think depending on how sensitive you are to the peat, I'm mean, certainly for me, I think it's I'm, I'm not getting a peaty mine's definitely more of a waxy, like a waxy pear is what I'm getting with a with like a woody, spicy woody. No, I'm not getting as much as you say sooty as you are. I'm getting yeah, that's the great thing about this. We all have different palettes and we're all yeah. gonna try and, and, and find different things. For me, I'm getting a, a bit more of a kind of tobacco leaf kind of cigar. Um, kind of smoke uh, from this rather than a classic Isla mm. kind of bold, brash smoke. Yeah, exactly, yeah. like a bonfire or like your Kalila, which is like that coal So You're definitely definitely not not getting that here. Dave Worthington just poured a Nika Kofi. Milt, Milt uh, Scott, first Japanese whiskey, really enjoyed that one. Mm. Daniel Hockman, first Japanese whiskey too. Delicious. This is the great thing. We're all trying Japanese whiskey together and... Um, for a lot of us, it might be the first time we tried Japanese whiskey. This is a great starting point. It's, it is uh, a great starting point. And if you like this, then, yeah, def definitely, I think, you know, keep an eye out for, you know, our small subscription box. Hopefully, if, if you like it, we'll look to, obviously, for the team to add, I think, some more Japanese whiskey, which I think they will anyways. But also go and explore, you know, if you like this, go and explore and have a look at what what you know especially the nicker range or other other japanese whiskies are, are going to be i would say similar sort of feel with that subtle elegance that you're going to get from from all of it for the most as a rule of thumb so the problem with japanese whiskey at the moment without getting too specific is on the yeah. secondary market it is so expensive to buy older single malt of japanese whiskey the hibiki 17s the nika 17s mm. for example which is why they're releasing more non-age statement yeah. blended whiskies so you know nika from the barrel you know, is a, another super cheap whiskey, Habiki Harmony, 
These are all types of Japanese whiskies that are affordable for us to kind of start looking towards Japanese whiskey. This yeah. is another one, but you have to be quick with this one because it has been yeah. discontinued. And I have to say, with, with the Nikka, we've definitely got confirmed that, you know, they've, they've discontinued it. Um, I mean, it's a shame. It's, it's, it's a bottling, you know, that is not a new one. They've had they've had this out sort of consistently launched since 2014. Um, obviously, they're, I think they're going to re revamp it. But, yeah, we have got told that the, the new sort of offering that's going to come in through, it is a different different liquid. So we've still got some, obviously, on the pour and sip. So I would definitely say go and have a look. And if you do like it, grab yourself some before it goes. Uh, well, yeah, word of advice. It's like the Glengoyne as well. Yeah. This, this, this dram it's is not going to be in that bottle for much longer. So uh, to get the 10% discount pour and sip is a good idea. I'm going to do the same with Glengoyne in particular because that is going to sell out, just yeah. like the first chapter did. Uh, just some more comments. Um, Amy Beth 948, my first Japanese whiskey too, and love it. The discount on the full bottle is tempting. Exactly. It is tempting. <laughs> I'm tempted as well. You know, these, these are little try before you buy. It's a safe bet. It's a safe bet. You're not going to buy a bottle and then might not like it. You get to try it and then you realise you do. Yeah. Want it. Exactly. Without wasting a full bottle. And then you, go, you know what? You know, obviously some of the comments that we had, you know, it seems like, you know, the bourbon, there's a bit of a split between the bourbon at the moment with viewers today. But at the end of the day, okay, fair enough, you don't like it, then I certainly hate buying. I've never bought a bottle to be fair that I didn't like. But, you know, I, I don't like the idea of buying a bottle and go, oh, I don't like it. It's awful. You force yourself to like it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, just just before before we go, just uh, I, I, I want to say let, let's get your favourites in. Please let us know your favourites. Yeah, yeah, so what's your favourite? Yeah, yeah, your favorite. Just, just those last notes. Catherine Lamb, uh, now I can't read that. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's in Japanese. Uh, A.K. Kiriena, merit meaning beautiful. The Peter's almost a separate finish. Thanks, sip and pour, pour and sip. Uh, Nicholas Stephen, agree tobacco, very slight. Mm. So it is subtle. The Japanese do everything subtly. There's no big, bold, brash fla flavor. No. This is subtle, uh, and which is just it's so entrenched, entrenched in Japanese culture. This is interesting. Now, now, see, with whiskey as well, obviously we've, we've had these out and they've got a little bit of time to sort of oxidise a bit of air. I'm picking up some sort of orangey Satsuma notes now. Orange peel, for but sure. Yeah, definitely. That is, it's just coming like sort of fresh orange juice. It's, it's starting, to, yeah. uh, starting to come through now. So that's that's great as well. You know, if you're tasting at home, obviously, by all means, if you, if you can leave them over a bit of time, and if you can leave a little bit in like all three and keep on going back to them, like some of them will change and will develop, but then, you know, by comparing them as well, you get to appreciate each of the dram in their own right. And that's the fun bit as well, that you go back and go, oh, actually, I didn't pick that up earlier, but, you know, going back and, and to say with a bit of time, this is, this is, yeah, I, I didn't get that citrus note before. Uh, there is definitely citrus note in there. The whiskey, yeah. uh, like I said, I said this, I think in a previous um, tasting, whiskey develops in the glass, and I've always been told a minute in the glass, a minute in the cask, uh, a year in the cask, a minute in the glass. So <laughs> 17, 17 <laughs> years in the cask, <laughs> 17 minutes in the glass before it starts to unravel its flavours. Um, Nicholas Stephen agreed to back a very slight. Callum McKenzie, just wondering if you will be live streaming a tasting of the final two. Really enjoy tonight. Yeah. Yes, we will. Yeah. The 26th of November, we will do the uh, second, the last two drams. So, yeah. if you have so the you patience, have two seconds. I've got the last. I've got the last two dram here. So, um, and then it's going to be a boutique whiskey, Camera Bridge, 27 year old. Mm -hmm. 27 year old. Yeah, and so that. And then the um, Highland Park Calf Strength, which is also, I'm um, again another huge fan of Highland Park. That's going to be a little bit peated. Um, so they're going to be two two great drams, um, yeah, to, to look forward to, obviously, in the next tasting. 100%. And uh, we didn't want to do five in one session, so it just not be overwhelming. So we want to split it three and two uh, so that we can get most out of these live tastings. So if you have the patience and the willpower, uh, please save your drams for the next tasting. Exactly. And, you know, we, we want to encourage, you know, responsible drinking as well here. And, you know, five drams in one night is it's a little bit much, um, I think, for, for most. But, you know, maybe not in lockdown. Hey, you don't have to drive anywhere. Uh, Billy, yeah. Gibb, Billy Gibb, half burnt wood, not charcoal. Agreed. Steve Cooper, this has been a nice surprise. A lot going on in this one. Oh, Nigel. Still on the, on the knicker. Is on that, the is that 
Uh, yes, really interesting session. Many thanks. Really enjoying the Japanese whiskey. P.S. Great discount on a bottle. Katie Joseph, her favourite is the Glen Goyne. Peter Gould, Glen Goyne. Billy Gibb, Glen Goyne. Kevin Harris, wow. Kevin Harris, Glen Goyne. Uh, Chris. Oh, Glen Goyne's going to win this one by the looks of it with our we, viewers. We will reveal ours. I don't know Kat's favourite and Kat doesn't know yeah. my favourite, so we will reveal ours at the end of this yeah. session. Chris, I'm so sorry, Chris, but I... Chris's favourite is Uncle Nearest. Um, Nigel Gain between the Glen Goyne and the Taketsuru. Uh, Jeff Brown, the Nika. Daniel Hockman, top is the Japanese. Nicholas yeah. Stevens, Glen Goyne, favourite for me. Roger Smithson, last one, the Nika by a mile. Tom Mission, honestly, though, my favourite of this was the Uncle Nearest. NAM fan, Fade, hard to tell, possibly the Uncle Nearest. Green Tea is green, a green Nick, Nicholas. Uh, Glen Goyne for me, and I'm the dyed in the wool of Freud man, like me. Um, yeah green tea and screen if you remember from the last stream uh i'm absolutely a lafroig man and uh i also like the softer sweeter side of whiskey like glen goyne yeah. nicola stephen same here's green tea steve cooper uncle nearest is closest to what i enjoy the most and um, peter gold uh will the highland park be in the sip and pour and sip shop i haven't seen it there sold out already that is a good oh, point okay. the highland park is yeah. a brand new whiskey it is going to sell out so if it does sell out we're really sorry for that yeah yeah and the uh, so just discussing, we've seen quite a broad range there of favourites. Most seems like maybe yeah, that is like quite a, yeah, quite a range. But I think definitely, I think I think people are between obviously the the Nicker and think and the Glen Goyne. So the question is, Kat, what is your favourite? Oh, I've been really thinking nice. about this. Okay, what's well, going to be? I think for me, certainly, I'm I'm quite lacking the Nicker. To be honest, that's that's for for tonight. That is just, you know, that is just sort of suiting my mood at the moment. That is quite sort of mellow. It's got a little bit of spice, but it's not too much. Um, that I think is a good one that actually, out of three, only purely for the reason that I like all of them, but actually I would rather have another dram of that one if I wanted to go to two drams. Whereas the other ones, I'm, like, I'm quite happy with one dram if I had to do that for tonight. So that's that's purely it. But otherwise, I, I definitely like all of them for different reasons. So so that's an uh, Nick of a cat. Uh, yeah. Michael Williams, big uh, uncle nearest for him. You and Cameron, Glen Goyne, Marcus Fenner, Glen Goyne. OK, um, I'm sure everyone is waiting with bated no. breath to know what my favourite no, is. What's your favourite? <laughs> Drum roll, please. Um, look, they're all there. <laughs> Exactly. They're all amazing whiskies. Absolutely, 100%. I've not, not enjoyed any of them. And But the one that surprised me the most was the Uncle Nearest. I really yeah. like that. I don't know if it's because of the high corn percentage in the mash bill, which really yeah. suits my palate. We were discussing earlier the Balcones, the Baby Blue, Mellow yeah. Corn yeah. being other. I just love corn whiskey. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But in terms of complexity and the dram that I would sit with the longest, yeah without doubt for me it would be the glen goyne it is a wonderful dram i love glen goyne like i said anyway it's a yeah. beautiful beautiful distillery that consistently produce amazing liquid they're not focused on crazy kinds of concepts they stick with those real traditions yeah, that definitely tradition. they, they stick with what they're good at and they stick at what they know so that, that's exactly it. they're not following trends which you sometimes see in the whiskey industry yeah. and i'm a real big fan of that dram and it's a celebration of glen goyne as a spirit which is what i really like about it the sherry cast maturation and yeah. the slow distilling process um exactly. that's it. any 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 more for any more if anyone else has got their favorites pr please let us know instantly before yeah, exactly. we are about to depart uh I, yeah and i think lastly for me i just hope obviously everybody's sort of you know in, enjoying along with uh, as you say our sort of make makeshift home videos <laughs> as we were saying, yeah. you know we're, we're enjoying a dram with you at your house in your home i was really thinking whether or not actually i should put trousers on or actually just put jogging bottoms on <laughs> I've got jogging buttons on underneath. I've got jogging buttons on underneath. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's um, yeah. We're it's uh, this is the great thing about it's the great thing. Uh, something we've had to deal with with COVID is we've had to kind of use technology to our advantage, and whiskey tastings have now gone from being all together to at home, and that's really the great thing that we can actually still during this pandemic share these brands together at home, and um, yeah. 
yeah and i think for us obviously i think everybody's missing that sort of social contact and i i know i am and obviously you know with doing tastings and stuff and not being able to see your expressions or see you know behind so this is why it's really important for you guys obviously please let us know what you think in the comments because you know it just it means that like when we're presenting it's rather than just the two of us chatting at home that actually we can get some feedback from you and know you know if you're enjoying it if you're tasting along you know what you think about the whiskey and actually let's let's make the virtual the same as a live conversation that we would have um, just you know barring we just can't see you for now but yeah certainly the conversation can still be the same so please comment and uh yes, yeah sir. a lot of people um actually kind of uh reciprocating that kind of thought yeah. peter Gould, thank you to both of you for a great evening thank you peter for listening uh, nigel gain indeed great evening green tea is green great and enlightening session catherine lamb great tasting guys faith has to be the nika see you on the 26th um, thank you so much, everybody. And um, yeah, thank, thank you very much for joining in. Yeah. And thank you to Kat uh, for joining. This has been your first pour and sip. And it it's has. Been... Yeah, it's not been as scary as uh, as I thought it was going to be. So it, that's it, good. Yeah, it's been really great talking to you, actually. And it's been a really fun evening for me. And both of us actually had said previously we haven't, either, neither of us have really tried these drams before. Yeah, exactly. Been... So we, we are literally, you know, tasting and, and tasting along with you. Um, so yeah, it's for me, as you say, it's the closest thing to be able to actually, you know, meet up and share a dram and and have those conversations with people that that you normally do, um, just over whiskey when when you're at a bar or a pub or anything like that or at a show. You know, none of us have been to any of those this year, and also for some of other people as well who you know I think have seen some other comments who for whatever reason have never made it to a show or not able to, to go to a bar or anything like this this is this is it we, we can chat to each other now and all be you know as you say share our knowledge and become a little bit of a whiskey geek at home Comfort zone. Exactly. we're all becoming whiskey geeks at home now we're using lockdown to do that so thank you again remember that we'll be back on the 26th and um, the, the tasting yeah. of the last two the cameron bridge and the highland park and um, make sure if you really do love one of these drams, head to the pour and sip store and get your 10% discount on one of the bottles. Uh, it could make a great pr Christmas present as well. And otherwise, we'll say goodbye and cheers yeah. and we'll see you on the 26th. Yeah, thank you very much everybody for joining in. Thank, thank you everybody. Cheers. Bye.